Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting edition of STEM Coding. My name is Jamore Givens. I am a graduate student at The Ohio State University, just about to wrap things up in a couple weeks. Um, today I want to talk to you about Project Mercury. Now, many of you watching this video are too young to have been around at the time, but Project Mercury was one of the first instances of the United States trying to launch someone into orbit and recover them. And by recover them, what we mean is they get launched into space, they orbit around for a while, and then eventually they land somewhere in the ocean. Um, it was important that our astronauts going up into space were, accurate, were recovered quickly enough because if they were not, they could end up sitting out in the middle of the ocean and waiting to be rescued. And we would like to treat them much better than that. Um, you know, it's a health risk to just sit outside in a hot space capsule in a hot space suit. Now, NASA worked diligently on this early on, and one of the first people they had working on this was mathematician Katherine Johnson. She was one of the first African-American individuals, and in particular African-American women, to work for NASA. And she was very influential in putting together these equations that helped us figure out how to put someone into orbit and how to f figure out where they're going to land when their orbit is done. Some of you might have seen the movie from about three years ago called Hidden Figures. Um, that movie focused on her accomplishments and those of two other black female scientists. One of the things you might have had questions about is what exactly is the math she was doing in order to help people come back to Earth successfully? And today we're going to start by going over that a little bit. Um, and this is really being done at a basic level, sort of the introductory physics level. Um, of course, what Ms. Johnson was doing was much more complicated than what we're going to do here. But we'll start with a simple case and build up um, and eventually get into part two, where we talk more about some of the calculations she did. In order to look at the kind of mathematics that Katherine Johnson did, we're going to start by working with a modified version of our slingshot with gravity code. Um, many of you might have done this exercise before, and if you have, you should be pretty familiar with what we're looking at. And if you haven't, that's fine too. So let's start. Um, here in step zero, we're just going to click here to open the code. Um, I always like to put the console down, just so that way we can see more of the screen and have fewer distractions. Um, so that's step one. So the first thing we like to do is take note of the units we're dealing with here. Because in any physics problem, it's very important to understand what units you're dealing with in order to get reasonable results. Now, what you'll notice around here is that we give coordinates to the position of the Earth. So the Earth is going to be on the center of our screen. Um, and we give an X value of 375 and a Y value of 250. Um, and then the radius of the Earth, we're just making Earth as a sphere in this case, or a circle for the purposes of the display, is simply 50. Um, and we also have a mass for the Earth, which we say is 1,000. And then we have Newton's constant, which we say is um, 100. Now, those of you who have done introductory physics might think that this is kind of awkward. Um, nowhere in any textbook will you see a value for m that's 1,000 and a value for g that's 100. Um, but this is something that we do for the purposes of making the code function on the time scale of a video. If I actually wanted to use true values for, say, the mass of the Earth and Newton's constant, it would not be able to display nearly as well on a computer screen as we can get it to work here. So these are just some toy numbers, but they work well for our purposes. Um, and now step two, we want to start thinking about the initial conditions. And what we mean by initial conditions is not so much um, the rocket being launched from Earth, that is a type of initial condition, but we're not starting from there. We're imagining some point where the rocket has already made it into space and it just got past the Earth's atmosphere. So what's happening is that in this position, uh, we're going to give it an initial position of x of 430 um, and y of 250. And if you recall here, comparing to the x position of the Earth and the y position of the Earth, um, this ends up putting us somewhat to the right of where the Earth is located and at the same height as the center of the Earth. So that explains how we're going to start with the position. As for the velocity of the Mercury capsule, we're going to start with only giving it a y velocity and no x velocity. So let's see what that does. 